dropping into the icy cold water the temperature here is down to about 12 degrees and visibility as you can see not that great one of the main reasons why the visibility is so poor is the huge volumes of krill that you get here in this time of year and it's these millions upon millions of tiny microscopic organisms that form the basic food source for most of the animals within our ocean. As you can see here, right down on the bottom, again, just millions and millions of these tiny little animals. So it wasn't a case of diving below them or above them. They were pretty much a whole column or a whole band from the surface down to the bottom. Getting down, there's the usual crayfish, lots of anemones around. And while I was just sort of getting settled in and getting comfortable, I noticed this very interesting little brittle star slowly moving across the sand granules. There are many different types of these brittle stars and this particular one is called a hairy brittle star. They each have five arms and all attached to a disc-like main body. Each arm is covered in tiny little hair-like spines which aid it in moving across the bottom. They're very gregarious animals and they can congregate in big numbers on little rocky outcrops and rocky ledges. As you can see, all intertwined in amongst them needle urchins. Perhaps they use the urchin spines for some type of protection against predators. These little brittle stars all feed on microscopic organisms, tiny little crustaceans, decaying flesh, things like that. And once you pull away from these rocky outcrops, you can just see an absolute mass of sea urchins intertwined with these little brittle stars. The highlight for me today was when this tiny little octopus just drifted down right in front of my camera. This little octopus is absolutely minute. His body is about the size of my thumb with perfectly formed little legs and below each leg is many different little sucker pads which he uses to help him move along the bottom. Amazing little animals. Each animal has three hearts. A heart for each gill which enables it to pump blood through the gills and then one heart to pump blood throughout the rest of the body. And as most people know, masters of disguise, and even at this young age, you can see him moving over different texture and different color, and he's already trying to, to change his color. Well, a very unique little feature about these animals is they don't have bones like fish, and they don't have an exoskeleton like nautilus shells or crayfish. So they're extremely supple and extremely flexible as well, which allows them to slip into the tiniest of little holes and cracks, which is a perfect defense mechanism against any predators that are trying to hunt them. It was really the most amazing dive, just watching this little guy going about his daily business and then disappearing into a little crevice that's about a half a centimeter wide. We've headed out to a reef called Stringer. It's quite a shallow dive here, around about 10 meters on the top of the reef. And although it will pick up some of the swell, it's also quite uncrowded. Part of the course are these beautiful snapper. They form these big yellow clouds and will just hover above the reef.
We began to head up to the northern side of Little Stringer and eventually we came across onto the edge of the sand where this large ray was taking refuge. Now these rays, they lie quite close to the sand obviously and they actually bury themselves to take refuge and camouflage and it's probably one of the animals that is least bothered by the surge in the area. Here the eyes stick out so that they can find their prey or look for any potential predators. And just behind this eye you'll see the gill. This animal will take in water through its mouth and pass out the excess water through these gills. We decided to head a little bit down the reef and immediately I noticed these strange little fish following us, the gold bar wrasse. Now the Sergeant Major is this fish in the middle you see here and they have these bars on them. And this patch on the rock that you see here, it's almost got a bit of a bluish tinge, is in fact the eggs from these fish. They will defend these eggs against any potential predators, but these gold bar wrasse are very, very fond of the Sergeant Major eggs. So as I've approached, the gold bar wrasse have actually moved in. You can see the Sergeant Major doing a sterling job of its defences here, and the gold bar wrasse are not actually breaching the defences. I didn't want to move too close to the nest itself because then the wrasse would have actually been able to get to the eggs and the sergeant major herself would have been scared off. A lot of people dive here at Sudwan and they don't notice these subtle little stories but as soon as you see any behavior going on you must always realize that there's a beautiful story lying hidden just beneath the surface. As I dropped down, I came across this pretty big uh, round ribbon tail ray. This particular ray was quite strange in that uh, something had obviously bitten his tail off. They normally have a tail of about half a meter long. It didn't take long for the striped cleaning rest to, to find this guy and start cleaning off all the little parasites that accumulate on all these different fish species. They'll jump onto any animal that uh, has the time of day to come and spend a bit of time within the cleaning station. The other interesting thing I found on this dive was this blue spotted round ribbon tail ray. Possibly the smallest ray that you find within this area. These guys eat mostly crustaceans which they, they pick up in the sand. <laughs> 